Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection December 12, 2021 Sunday The Third Sunday of Advent We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First Reading A reading from the book of the prophet of Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 14 to 18a. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness, and renew you in His love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2 to 3, 4 and 5 to 6. Let our response be, cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Response. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. Response. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation. O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Response. Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and Holy One of Israel. Second reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 to 7. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again. Rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, Alleluia. Gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 3 verse 10 to 18. The crowds asked John the Baptist, what should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, Do not practice extortion, do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, 
I am baptizing you with water. But one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways. He preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel An integral part of Luke's Gospel message is the need for conversion metanoia, that is, a change of mind to a way of thinking and acting that is divine. Very often we meet in Luke's Gospel scenes where the mercy of God manifests itself in Jesus Christ towards the poor and humble of heart. These scenes stand in contrast to the severe treatment reserved for the rich and proud whose heart is hard and close to God and the needy neighbor. The text of this Sunday's liturgy presents us with this theme. John the Baptist proclaims the imminent coming of the day of the Lord. Brood of vipers, who warned you to fly from the retribution that is coming. The prophets had proclaimed the coming of this day of wrath and salvation, as also the coming of a messenger known as Elijah, who would prepare the way before the Lord. In Christian tradition, John the Baptist is the messenger who prepares for the day of the coming of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. Someone is coming. Someone who is more powerful than I am. In fact, John's ministry takes place at a time of great messianic expectations. A feeling of expectancy had grown among the people and asks of the Baptist whether he is the Messiah. Later, this question is put to Jesus too who then reveals his identity in the implicit confirmation of the profession of faith made by Peter. We have everything concerning the ministry and mission of John the Baptist. He was sent to baptize as a sign of repentance and to preach the conversion that brings salvation. Produce the appropriate fruits. I baptize you with water. Through his preaching, John announced the good news that salvation was not only reserved for some of the elect but is offered to all, including publicans and soldiers, to all those who live and act justly and with charity. Jesus, in his turn, will further clarify this truth by his merciful attitude towards publicans, sinners and those marginalized. In fact, the theme of salvation became tied to the coming of the kingdom of God, which is in our midst and implies social justice and equality among all people. Hence salvation is not just an abstract and personal quality but is real and collective. This salvation is offered to us by God in those who are baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn in a fire that will never go out. Following the Gospel story, we see that several times Jesus will make similar references concerning the coming of the Kingdom through warnings and parables. We can say that in looking at the ministry and mission of Jesus, Luke lets us see the perfecting of the proclamation and preaching of John. Here we may remember what Jesus said in the synagogue in Nazareth. This text is being fulfilled today even as you listen. The need for conversion metanoia, that is, changing one's imperfect way of thinking to the divine way of thinking and acting. Do I feel this need? God's mercy towards the poor and humble of heart manifests itself in Jesus Christ. Do I identify myself with these? A feeling of expectancy had grown among the people. The early Christians anxiously awaited the second coming of the Lord. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come let everyone who listens answer, Come. Do I await the coming of the Lord? Or am I so busy with material life that I am inordinately attached to all things passing? In Christian tradition, John the Baptist is the messenger who prepares the people for the first coming of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. The Church has received the same mission of preparing the way of the Lord who will come. I shall indeed be with you soon. What can I do to prepare for the second coming of the Lord? Salvation is not reserved for a few elect but is offered to all, 
including those considered unworthy of the salvation of God. In Jesus' time, those included among the unworthy were the publicans and pagans. Who are those frequently considered unworthy of salvation in our day? The theme of salvation is closely related to the coming of the kingdom of God and has social justice implications. Now I am making the whole of creation new. What can I do to promote justice in a way that will affect the structures of social injustice? 